right. So I'm showing you guys how I take apart and clean a nitro engine. This is a Dynamite 12S. Don't know if you can see all that. But you're going to need your rags, shop towels, Q-tips, brake clean. You're going to need your tools. I got a ratcheting screwdriver with bits. I also have a drill. That just makes things easier. So, first thing we're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the head off. Um, here we go. Something to think about is when you're taking these engines apart, you want to make sure your screws are all kept in one place. If I had to guess, it's probably number two. Yup. I am not the best at chucking. There we go. Make sure that these guys are coming out. It's one out. Back it up a bit. It's two out. You want to be really careful with this, actually. I'm going to set this down to a lower setting, because I don't want to destroy my screws. Now, I will use the drill to take stuff apart, and will not use it to put it back together. Let's see, we're almost out. Okay, so we got the head off. You can see this is a head where the top of the engine, or the um, combustion chamber part, is not attached to the head. It's separate. Give me a second, guys. Let me turn off my heater. <clears throat> anyway, like I was saying, the head and the combustion chamber part, or the head button, are not together on this engine, so it's a separate piece. So, what you wanna do to get this off of here, you have two options. Uh, both involve heat. You can either try and very gently pry, well, this one's gonna come up for us, but you could pry between the sleeve and the button, which I don't like, or you can get your, uh, get your ratchet, put it on your glow plug, and you can twist it back and forth until it comes loose, and it'll pop off. Take a look at this. This engine looks like, you can see, give me a second, guys. You can see there is some kind of marring on that, so that means there was definitely something in this engine at one point. Probably just metal shavings. Could be from braking, could be from anything. You got your head shim here. You need that to keep your button and it, just to keep everything evenly spaced. If you don't have that, your compression you'll have too much compression. The piston could slam into this surface. Uh, well, I got this off. I didn't remove the glow plug. Let's see if the glow plug lights up still. Mm, that one might be dead. I got two glow igniters. Okay, you can see right there that that is nice and glowing, so that doesn't exactly mean that it's good. It just means that it's still getting hot. These glow plugs, they are coated in platinum, and I think once that platinum is all burnt up, they won't glow at all anymore, or they won't hold heat properly. I could be wrong about that. But I do think it's platinum coated. I'm gonna put that in here. Put that over here. Here you can see down into the actual sleeve. 
can see that the piston does move, so this engine isn't locked up, which is good. Uh, next, we're going to want to remove the sleeve. And it's pretty stuck in there. So the method I use for removing sleeves is I get, get a Q-tip or two. I put it in the exhaust port. And what's going to happen when you put it into the exhaust port is it's going to come up through here, and you can see it. And hopefully, when we turn the engine over, the piston will push on these Q-tips and push that sleeve up. Now, like that. See how it just came up? Watch. We'll do it again. Boop. Came up. That should be enough for us to pull it out. So bring your piston back down, the bottom dead center, pull out these Q-tips. We may use those for cleaning later. And then you can pull out your sleeve. Now, if your sleeve stuff does not come out that easy, get yourself a heat gun, and you can heat up the block. And you want to get it as hot as you can stand. I mean, not like 400 degrees, but like if you could get it to like 150, 200-ish, you may want to wear some sort of welding glove when you do that. All right, so that's out. We're going to put that in its own thing. We're going to put the piston back into the sleeve when we get it out. You can see on the sleeve it has a little notch, and that notch will line up with a pin on here, so you know how to put the piston sleeve, or not the piston sleeve, you know how to put the engine sleeve back into place properly. And I'll show you how to make sure you get the piston back in the right way too. So now we are going to take the back plate off. Possibly. I have one screw that's kind of messed up. I'm hoping it's all comes off just fine. There's that guy. My... Man, that thing does not want to stay in there tight at all. There we go. Don't do what I just did. Make sure you have a firm grasp on it. Get that guy off. And get this guy off. Okay. I'll put these guys in their own little dish. I'm going to try and put some pliers on here. And turn this screw. I think someone had to modify the screw for that to happen. Okay. It's coming. You want to try and replace this when you have a screw that's damaged this way. I'm not saying that you can't reuse it, but it may become a bigger pain in the ass if the head of the bolt does break off. You can see that it is not how it's supposed to be. Once that's off, we can get the back plate off and try going at it with your nails first. But if it doesn't move, what I would do is I would twist. So I'd put pressure on these sides of the back plate and twist it, and it usually will free up. If not, then you would have to resort to probably heating and using a flat blade screwdriver and trying to pry. But that can damage this gasket back here, which why you don't want to take these apart too fast. Give me a second, guys. Trying not to tear this gasket, because I don't got another one. Okay. Got the back plate off. Got the back plate gasket off. That's going to go in here. And then we can see inside the engine. Well, in the bottom of it. You can see it's kind of... Kind of gross in there. Not terrible, though. But at this point, we can take the piston out. So, you want to get the crank pin at the bottom of the rod clear. And then you want to be able to pull it out. You may be able to try and get your fingers in there and pull it out. It did come out. 
Uh, if you can't do it that way, I'm gonna try tweezers and grabbing at the at the rod. But I was able to successfully get that out of there just fine. So when you take this out, you want to make sure that the cutout is facing your exhaust port. I do believe. Yeah. Exhaust port. So you now you can take your piston and your sleeve and you can kind of line that up. That notch is back this way and then you can take your piston, put that in here and then you can put them together. You can also, this is a good point, you can see how the this window right here lines up with the cutout in the piston skirt. Now this is a good time to see how much pinch your sleeve has. You push your piston up here just as much as you can. You can see how this piston is coming out the top of the sleeve and this is cold. That means this, this engine's dead. It has no compression left. So we may need to re-pinch this engine in the future, which usually involves sending this off to someone or trying to do some homemade... Uh, pinching tools, which I am not too confident in. But this engine won't run like that. Not very well. It'll, well, it won't, probably won't hold an idle. The second it gets hot, it'll expand too much, and it'll, it, it ain't gonna run very well. So, there's that, there's that. Next, we can take the clutch bell and flywheel off. You got this little E-clip here. You're going to want to use your flat blade screwdriver and pry that off. You're going to get this E-clip off, put the E-clip in the thing, get your clutch bell off. You have two bearings in there, they may or may not fall out. Put that there. Take the shoes off. You can just slide these off most of the time. If you can't slide them off, you can use your flat blade once again and try and pry it out from under there. Now your, this clutch nut right here is a shaft, like it has an extended shaft on it, and it has two spacers on it, or two washers. You don't want to lose those, because that's your spacing for your uh, flywheel to sit up off, no, the spacing for your clutch bell to sit up off the surface of your flywheel, so it doesn't grind and uh, stall your engine out. Can you see that? See my breath? It's cold in here, guys. I may take a break. I'm going to turn my heater on for a minute. I'll be right back. All right, I warmed it up in here a little bit. Dr. Pepper time. All right. So, yeah. Anyway, from here, we're going to remove the clutch nut. So, this clutch nut is a 10 millimeter. So you can get your 10 millimeter socket. And you're going to want to just loosen it. Now, the problem with this is it's just going to spin your, your flywheel and your crank. So you have two options. One, take this big old, like, adjustable wrench, put it on your flywheel, hold it, and then try and turn it. Or... You can put it in a bench vise, which is what I'm going to do. If you don't got a bench vise, you're going to have to hold it with uh, some kind of like jaw pliers or something. But if you do got a bench vise, that makes life easy. It just comes off. And right into your trash can. But it's off. And then you got your flywheel. So you got your flywheel off, you get your clutch nut off, you got all of it off. I got a fish for that now. Alright. I just hit my knee on the table. Don't do that, guys. Don't hit your knee on the table. Okay. Whew. Clutch nut flywheel in there. All right, you're gonna have this collet on here. And the easiest way to get this off is take your flat blade, and there's a, 
it's split, you can take your flat blade, stick it in that split, kind of turn it a little bit, <clears throat> collar will come off. Put that in there. Next, we can remove the carburetor. Well, yeah. So we're going to get probably a 5.5. .5. Yep. Then we get a ratchet. Drop our socket off the table. This video ain't going according to plan, guys. And loosen the pinch bolt. And your carb should come out. If it doesn't come out that easy, heat up the block, keep twisting, and you get your carburetor off. Okay, then you can see down into the intake, you can see your uh, how your crankshaft has a cutout time window, and then that opens is when the fuel goes into your into the bottom end, and your while it's spinning, that picks up and goes to your transfer ports and whatnot. After that, we want to remove this crankshaft. Now, usually this is really hard to do, so you want to like heat it up. You want to get yourself like a mallet and either bang it out or heat it up and slap it on the table. But for some reason, this uh, crankshaft is very loose. So I can just take this one out. Well, almost. Let's see here. There we go. Come on. All right. Crankshaft out. And you can see it has that window for your fuel to go in, and that goes in that window and out that way. It's not bad, but this all can get cleaned up. And you got your bearings in here. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Let me turn you towards the light more. You can see your bearing is in there. I'm going to want to blast all that and clean all that rust out of there. So... When you're cleaning out your engine block, you're going to want to use brake clean if you can. WD-40 works, but the problem with WD-40 is uh, there's water in it. And water is not great for your uh, nitro engines because water will obviously make your engine rust. And it, doesn't, it just doesn't do as good of a job as brake clean does. So, what you're going to do... I'm going to spray a little bit of brake clean in here. You want to get everything saturated in your brake clean. And then you can either take Q-tips or you can take a shop rag, which is what I'm going to do. Take a shop rag. And just get up in there. Try and get as much gunk and rust and what you have you out of there. See how dark that got. A lot of times you'll get old nitro fuel out of this way. Because when nitro fuel uh, sits, it'll turn into like gel. Which is not good. It collects water and it turns into like gelatin. You want to get everything out of there you can. You go up through the top of the engine you can wipe out. You got all that gunk out of there. Clean it. Now, this is when you're going to use your Q-tips. And you're going to clean out the hole where the crank goes. I'm going to be careful, because if you press down on this too much, it'll shoot a lot of brake clean out, which I'm not trying to do right now. But, this is how I clean out my engines. Brake clean... Q-tip, shop rag. You just want to make sure you wipe down all the surfaces and get as much of this rust and gunk and crud out of here as you can. And I'm not showing it on camera very well. Give me a second, guys. You want to try and get, like, around the bearing because that's where all your rust usually comes out anyway 
your bearings build up with and hold the rust in there. So you want to get that out of there because that'll destroy your bearings. Not that these bearings aren't already destroyed. You want to clean that up as nice as you can. Clean out the, the where the sleeve goes. Clean out where the carb goes. You just want to get it all out of there squeak clean. All right. After you cleaned your block, you clean your shaft. You know what I'm talking about. Take some brake clean. Spray it on there. Wipe it down. Spin it. What have you. Just clean it up. You get all that amazing rusty crud off of there. If this is like covered in rust, you can use a very, very, very light like scotch bright pad and scrape it up. Scrape it, not scrape it, but uh, scratch it. But you want to be very careful with it. You don't want to leave like really deep grooves in there because then the uh, this surface is what rides on the inside of your bearings, and you want that to be smooth. <laughs> smooth. My bad. Um, wipe your counterweight really well. Spray some carb clean into the crank itself. Get you a fresh Q-tip. Clean out the inside of the crank. And there you go. Crank is done. Back plate. Spray it, wipe it. Not much you can do. Or the back plate. Get it all cleaned up. Make it look nice. Tell your mommy you actually clean something for once in your life. She'll be proud of you. I promise. And there you go. That's clean. Now your carburetor. I would not clean your carburetor with anything else other than actual nitro fuel. Because I am too afraid that the brake clean will swell up your O-rings. I'm not sure. I would have to ask the bug on that one. But I don't know if it will disintegrate or destroy your O-rings or any of your rubber parts. But what you can do is get you some nitro fuel. Just pour that in there. It'll come out the other end. Guys, I have a case of the dropsies. Put your cap back on your nitro fuel before you drop it. And get you another Q-tip. You're going to go through a lot of Q-tips doing this. Lay it out the top end of the carb. And open that carburetor up and clean all out. The inside, and you can see all this gross gunk coming out of here. You don't want that going in your engine. A big old truck just went by. Get all that out of there. Then you want to do the other side. Clean that out. You see how much gross stuff is in there, guys? It's gross. That's dirtier than the KFC floor. Not that KFCs are all dirty. That was just just, a, just, a, just an analogy for y'all. As gross as the KFC floor. All right. Then you can also just try and clean up the outside a little bit and wipe it down. You got it all nice and looking good, and then your carburetor's clean. And you can also clean this boot. A lot of times you end up with your air filter oil on the boot. Now, this is not the best air filter in the world. In fact, this is one of those, like, 
knock off K&N filter things that don't really do much of anything. That's why I got this pre filter on the outside. I probably won't even run this filter. It's not a good filter. It does look cool. Not great. Put the zip tie back on there. Put that back on there. And then carburetor. Boom. Done. Next thing you want to clean. You could probably clean up your uh, head shim, but you want to be very careful not to bend this to break it. I'm going to clean up the button head. I think I'm probably going to want to take the glow plug out of there. You don't want to spray your glow plug with brake clean. Not sure, but probably don't want to do that. Now, this probably would have been easier when this was all together. So I have messed up. So what I'm going to do is that I didn't take the glow, pl glow plug out earlier. So I'm going to spray... The Q-tip, and then just wipe it down with the Q-tip. Try and go in here without disturbing the glow plug too much. All right, that is cleaner. I'm gonna try and clean the top up. Because this dirt and stuff will probably accumulate and then it'll cause your head not to sit all the way down on the button. So, might as well clean it. Well, you have it off as well as you can. But head. Cleaned. Piston and sleeve. Same deal. Spray. And you can wipe them clean. If you don't have brake clean, but you do have nitrofuel, you could clean the whole thing with nitrofuel. But I don't advise using WD-40 for this. Alright. Make sure you get the top of it all nice and clean, because you'll have not carbon buildup, but you can get like natural gunk stuck on the top of your head, or the head of the uh, piston. So, again, you can line the exhaust port window and the skirt cut out together. And put them back. Now that's cleaned. Um, I think at this point, we're ready for reassembly. Now, when you go to assemble your engine, you're going to uh, oil your parts back up. You can use a few different things. You can use uh, cast oil. You can use air tool oil. You can use after run oil, uh, but I'm going to use air tool oil because that's what I got closest to me. I do have castor oil, but this this uh, this is just air pump oil. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to put our crank back in. But before we do that, we're going to drop a little bit of oil into this bearing. up in there and then we'll drop a crank in well you know what might as well put some oil on that crank just just a little bit now if your crank won't go back in what you can do if it's really tight but you got it out can't get it back in just heat up the block but put your crank in the freezer for a couple hours um the steel crank will contract while your block will expand and then Whatnot and your bearings will expand, and then you can usually fit them in. You want to make sure you got oiled up all well, nice. Then we can move on to dropping our piston in. You're going to want to add a little bit of oil to the crank pin for the end of your rod. 
with the sleeve facing the exhaust port side. You drop that in there. This is where you want to use your tweezers to pick this up and to put that back on. I'm going to try and do this at an angle where you guys can see this. I'm going to try and get that back up onto that crank pin. This is a lot harder to do on camera. There we go. And it's on. There we go. That's on there. Once that's on there, you want to bring your piston all the way up to the... Give me a second. Wait a minute. I think I put the piston in backwards, guys. Flip it around. I must have had it turn on me when I was trying to put it on. Don't you flip again. There we go. Now that you got your piston in there, you want to take your oil and you want to put a little bit of oil up on the where the connecting rod connects to the piston. I know you can't really see it that well. Um, but trust me, it's there. There's a, there's a shaft that goes through your piston head and it needs oil. And you lube all that up. And then that's good. Then you take your sleeve, you entertain your wife for a minute right. in your life. Your sleeve back in, you want to bring your piston all the way down to the bottom. And slowly put that down there and then you can kind of jimmy the crank back and forth until your piston kind of lines up and falls back into place. Maybe even flip this upside down. And it'll eventually, it'll all fit back together. You want to line up this notch with your sleeve, with the pin on the case. And then you push that down, and that's all good. And you got your sleeve back in. From here, we can put the back back on. When you put your back on, you want to make sure you put the back plate gasket back. And the best way I've found to do this is actually take a few screws. And... Put it on the back plate first, and then take your gasket, put the gasket on there, be real gentle with it so you don't tear it, push that down, and then you can line up the gasket with your screw, or your bolt. And then you got one bolt holding that gasket on there. Now, when you look at your back plate, you can see there's like a cutout. That's the top side. And that top side, that cutout, lines up so your piston, the way this is designed, that piston skirt cutout comes down so your piston skirt doesn't hit the back plate. That's why that's cut there that way, and it's also for your ports and opening all that. So that's... You want to make sure this is put this way. You also want to bring your piston up to the top. Just in case when you're putting this together. And then you want to tighten all your bolts up by hand. You don't want to take, you don't want to use your drill putting this back together. You don't actually necessarily need to use a drill to put it, or to take it apart. It's just easier that way. I have a ratcheting screwdriver, you can use actual RC car tools. That might be easier, but I got this ratcheting screwdriver uh, for Christmas and I want to use it, so I'm using it. You want to always tighten your bolts in an X or star pattern when doing this. I don't think there's like an actual torque spec for these guys. 
but you do want them snug. You don't want any air leaks. I am reusing this screw because I don't have another one right now, and I'm not going to tighten it all the way down. But I'll tighten the other ones all the way down. So you go here, then you tighten this one up. I'll tighten it by hand. I'll try. Then you go to one of the other two. Tighten that up. Tighten this one up. And you just go back and forth. Tightening them all up and down. Until you can't tighten them no more. Alright. From there we can put the head back on. So you want to get your head shim, put that on the button, make sure that's all cleaned off before you do this, and then put your button back on. It doesn't really matter which way this goes, this doesn't matter that much, I guess, I don't know. It might matter, but I don't know why it would. It's never caused me any problems. Put your head back on. Get your head bolts back out. Now you may want to actually drop your head bolts in here first. It's easier that way to make sure they're actually all the way down. Now you can see all your head bolts are through there. And then some of these cooling heads only have a cutout one way. So you can put cooling heads on wrong. This one has a cutout so you can see air will move through the cooling head both directions. So no matter which way you put this head on, it's fine. Some cooling heads are directional though. Line up all your bolt holes. Get this. Put the head back on. The same thing with the back plate, you want to go in a cross pattern. I'm going to take this ratcheting part off for a second. There's that one. And you don't want to crank one of these bolts all the way down and then go to the next one and crank it all the way down and crank the next one all the way down because it will put an uneven amount of pressure on your cooling head. And then you may end up with the cooling head on there cocked one way or the other. Like I kind of do right now. I'm going to back this off. I'm going to back this one off. That also makes it harder for your bolt to find the bolt hole and start the thread. There we go. And once you have all the bolts threaded into the holes, you can start tightening them in that X pattern. And then once you have them finger tight, you can get your tool. Really tighten them down. Because you don't want a, a leak from the head. That's why you got that head gasket. Or head shim, I should say. Alright. Now we can put on our carburetor. Before we put on our carburetor, we're going to drop a little bit more oil. Give me a second. Is that hitting? Nope, it's not hitting. It's just got... It's just got oil in it. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of oil down the intake. That'll help lubricate the shaft or the uh, crankshaft there you go and we can put our carburetor back on in whatever direction it needs to go you can you know when you're setting up a car you can flip this around 
you can move your carburetor in pretty much any position. Put your carburetor back on, and then you want to get your 5.5 millimeter socket. Maybe. I don't want to fit on there no more. Thought it did. Maybe your 6 millimeter. Ah, this one was 6. I was stupid. Get your 6.6 .6 millimeter on there, and you want to tighten this up. Now, you don't want to over-crank this, but you also do want it to be snug. If you over-crank this, you can actually crush your carburetor, which I have done. Let me show you. I have crushed a Dynamite 19 carburetor, which you can see that it is no longer round. When it's no longer round, it doesn't make a proper seal, and then you end up with an air leak, and then you can't, this carburetor's toast. You can see that pinch bolt crushed it, over tightened it, and that may be just the way that's designed, that pinch bolt, some of these carburetors, the way the pinch bolt is designed, won't crush it, but you just, always want to be careful, you don't want to over tighten these, but you also don't want them to be too loose, so... I'd say, use your own judgment, but don't over tighten it. Like, you clearly don't want to be able to move the car once that bolt is tight. Then we can put the clutch back on. Uh, and for this video, I'll put this clutch back on, but I don't think I'm going to keep this clutch on here because the compression on this engine is shot. So, get your collet, put that on, you get your flywheel, you put that on, you get your clutch nut, you start that, maybe, there we go, then you get your 10 mil socket, this is a Traxxas 3.3 uh, Pro 15 style clutch, it's a Traxxas clutch, you tighten it, you put it back in your bench vise, you tighten it up all the way, As you tighten it, the flywheel gets pushed farther and farther down that collet, and that's what holds your flywheel to your crankshaft. If that's too loose, your flywheel can actually come off the collet, and then it'll spin around and it won't actually be on the shaft, and it'll be all kinds of crazy bad. Take your clutch shoes, and now these are directional, but the Traxxas clutch shoes you can put in either way. It's just depending on how you want it to wear. It will work both ways, but I think one way engages more aggressively than the other. I'm not sure. Now, if you're having this problem like I am, what's happening is the spring is in the way of the pin. So you push this on here, and then you can get a really small hex driver. This is a 1.5. Put that in that hole, and that'll push that spring out just enough to where you can start pushing that clutch shoe back onto that pin. You go over to the other one. You want to try and do this as evenly as you can because that just came off. And it's making me very upset. There we go. Okay, so they're both on there, but they're not wanting to go down. Take this pin, push, moves the spring out of the way. Use the hex driver, push it down on the pin, and then it's out of the way, and then you got it on there. I'll leave. Then you can take your flywheel, or not flywheel, your clutch bell, put that back on there, take your C-clip, put this on here, get your needle nose pliers out, you want to grab the end of the C-clip, and push that back onto the shaft. And then once that's back on the shaft, that's all good to go. And then you got your flywheel back on. At this point, if you had an exhaust, you could put your exhaust back on. I don't have an exhaust on this engine right now. But that is how I disassemble and clean an engine when I get it. You can comment in the, you can put them down in the comments. Hope you all have a good day. I hope you all don't mess up your nitros. Keep burning nitro.
Bye.